Good evening. Hello. Raise your hand if you've said good morning to someone in the last half hour. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's wonderful to have you here for a continuation of our Wednesday night um, Lenten services. Uh, we will be doing the service of Hold an Evening Prayer. I have the big book because I'm leading, but you should have a... Um, everything will be on the screen, but we have the small books as well. Um, and then we have a little insert um, for uh, the season of Lent that shows the, our theme for the day, um, our scripture verse, and then our hymn that we will... Uh, that we will sing. So um, it's not required, but um, gives you a sense of, of where we are for the season. So tonight's theme is unable. And so we'll look at um, Romans chapter 5. So we'll begin with Hold Me Me Prayer. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine with invite you to be seated. As we sing the psalmody, uh, you'll notice there are two parts. I'm going to invite this side to be part one and this side to be part two. But you can sing whatever part you actually want to sing. So uh, let us lift our hearts in prayer.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from Romans chapter 5. Therefore... Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, though through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by the blood of Christ, we will be saved through Christ from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of Jesus, so much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We practiced, but not this part. All right, it's on. So just don't push any buttons until we're done. Okay, there you go. All right, this is Michael. He's playing 
Michael. I'm Pastor Nissa. I am playing Pastor Nissa. It's very complicated. All right. Ugh, I will never understand this homework. It's impossible. I can't do it. Well, what's the subject? Well, I've got discrete mathematics, subjective verbs in France, valences in chemistry. It's all just really hard at the same time. That certainly does sound like a lot all at once. Those are some pretty hard subjects, but you know what? You'll figure it out. Easy for you to say. You're already past it. No hard homework for you these days. Well, that's, I mean, that's sort of true, but I do have to write sermons every week, sometimes twice a week, and that can feel like homework, sometimes really hard homework, especially if you're trying to write a skit about something like human sin, but like also make it funny, you know? Well, good luck with that. Did you see, just see that chicken cross the road? Are you trying to help me come up with sermon jokes? Because thank you, I'll take it. <laughs> but seriously, though, writing sermons, sermons feels like hard homework? I mean, sometimes. I feel a lot of pressure to get it right. I mean, I have a really important message. And sometimes I worry that I'm failing God and I'm failing all of the people if the sermon isn't good enough. You know, I'm surprised that you as a pastor struggle with this. I thought your faith would be so strong that you could just trust in God and you'd have nothing to worry about. I wish that was the case. I mean, I certainly have a strong faith, but I'm also a human, so I worry. I make mistakes. I also can't always tell what God is thinking. But what about Philippians 4.13? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'm really impressed you know that right off the top of your head. Well, it was my confirmation verse, and I also have it on a t-shirt, so... Well, okay, still impressed that you know it. That is a good verse, but here's my thing with it, though. I know that Christ gives us the ability to do crazy and amazing things. Like heal people. Yes, and move mountains. And walk on water. And forgive people. Be forgiven of everything. Exactly. But like with all those things, it's really easy to see how those are all from Jesus, right? Like, I know for sure I am not able to walk on water on my own. So if I am walking on water, it's because of Jesus. Or it's a TikTok video trick. Yeah, but I'm old enough that I can't figure out that whole TikTok thing. So I'm pretty sure if I'm walking on water, it's just Jesus. But why can't you apply that to your sermons? Or to my homework, for that matter? Aren't you able to just preach well through Christ who gives you strength? Think about it like this. Okay, when I write a sermon, like, it's feasible that I'm able to do that on my own without Christ, right? Like, that's not ideal, right? But, like, I could. Which makes it harder to think that I am doing it because of Christ who gives me strength. It's easy to think that I'm doing this on my own and thus not doing it well enough on my own. Yes, sir, are you sure you should be admitting that as a pastor in front of, you know, all the people you're pastoring? You know they can hear you, right? I, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure they already know that I'm not a perfect person, so I, like, I think it'll be fine. Okay, so you're saying that while you're able to do things on your own, you end up feeling unable to do the thing on your own? I mean, yeah. When you put it like that, it does sound a little bit crazy, but that is exactly how it feels. So then, by the transitive property, if you felt unable to do it on your own, you might feel able to do it with Christ? Transitive property? Tell me again about your struggles with your math homework. But you hit the nail on the head, though, with that. I mean, okay, if I try to let go of doing everything by myself, I can let myself rely on Jesus. And that, overall, makes me feel able to do more things. So, then how does that apply to me and my homework? Well, what would the transitive property say? Probably that you don't really understand the transitive property after decades of not using it. Touché. <laughs> but I get your question. I need to also let go of the things trying that I'm able to not do all by myself and be vulnerable and open to Jesus about doing things for me. That's really hard to do, honestly. My whole life I've tried to be, I've spent doing things that I'm really good at. So thinking about being unable to do something is just not very fun. I understand. Overachievers are really rewarded around here. I mean, we want to do everything. We want to do it right. And gosh darn it, we want to do it on our own. But clearly that doesn't work on the, that way on my homework. Or my homework would already be done. And your sermon would already be done. I mean, technically my sermon is done. Here it is. We're doing it right now. Ah, uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> You're right. It is hard. But <laughs> that is sort of the point of what we do in Lent. I mean, we want the congregation to embrace the fact that they are totally unable. Unable to what? Unable to save themselves. Because we definitely need Jesus for that. Amen.
No matter how capable or talented we might be in every other part of our life, Jesus is the only way we are able to receive eternal life. We cannot do that on our own. I'm looking at that way, it seems like it's easier to see unable as a gift. Exactly. We can lean into that need for Jesus to save us. It might even help us to set down one of the thousand other things that we're trying to do perfectly all by ourselves. So does that mean that I can just tell my professor that I'm unable to do the assignment? Yes, Michael, you can totally stop doing any homework with zero consequences. Great, I will go tell my professor that right now and, said that my, and say that my pastor said it was perfectly fine. Good luck with that one. Or maybe you can just trust that God is at work through you, through your education, through the hard work that it entails. You know, that, that sounds like a better idea. Yeah, and you know what else sounds like a really good idea right now? Singing. We are definitely able to do that. All right. So we are going to sing Indescribable. Um, this is one of the songs that um, Off the Wall sings. It's a wonderful song that praises all of the amazing things that God is able to do that are too big for us to even imagine. So, Indescribable. I don't know what the number is in the book. Do you? 30. It's, she put it on the screen. Amazing. It's number 35, the colored folders, or the words will be on the screen. Um, while they are getting ready, I do have a brief announcement. Um, we are having um, the, the youth who are going on the mission trip this summer are selling soup mixes. Uh, you'll see those out in the gathering space since we weren't able to do soup supper tonight. However, we are planning to start soup suppers next week. And in order to do that, we need soup. We currently have five people signed up to bring soup. We usually need more like 15 soups. So please consider signing up to bring the soup or, you know, panda mac and cheese or like plain noodles or something um, so that we can offer that soup supper and be able to gather together. So we're planning to do that next week. It'll start at 530 in the fellowship hall. Thank you. Now let's sing. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creation's Describe 
unbreakable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All-powerful, unchangeable. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. Thank you so much. One other announcement I forgot to tell you is that Pastor Paul isn't here because he's on vacation. Last week he wasn't here because he was with our folks at Root Prairie. So, hey, Root Prairie people, nice to have you with us. Um, offering is in here because that offering is an act of worship. Um, so we encourage you to um, bring all of who you are as an offering uh, this evening. We have the offering plates placed in the back if you have a financial donation, uh, but we also celebrate the ways that each of us offers our own gifts and skills and talents um, and our prayers for the ministry of the work we do together. So thank you for all of that. We will continue, um, hold an evening prayer with the Annunciation, which I think is on page 8 in your booklet. It's just whatever's next, page 8, yep. So we'll continue. <clears throat> An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God invite you to be seated for the litany of prayers um, and invite you as well if you would like to come forward and pray along the altar rail during the prayers you are welcome but not required to do so Peace and 
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand if it's comfortable for you. And we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. Um, and we're going to do the one that's in the booklet and on the screen, which might be different than the one that you normally do, but this way we're all doing the same thing. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Confirmation students will meet up here right after, give us like three minutes after the service and we'll meet up here and we'll be done no later than 8 p.m. And now go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.